The previous few videos have been about making decisions under uncertainty, mostly focusing on low harm situations. We have discussed maximum expected utility, the sunk cost fallacy, and the concept of satisficing. Understanding all of these things hopefully will help us to lead a happier, more stress-free life. While satisficing is great, sometimes the stakes are a little bit higher and we need to look at all of our options more carefully. Clothes or grocery shopping are pretty low stakes scenarios, but when it comes time for you to make a decision about which college to attend, you want to slow down and weigh your options. Another good example would be a manager in a company interviewing potential employees. They should not just hire the first person who fits their criteria, but should compare all the eligible candidates. This would also be a complex situation because you could have two equally qualified candidates and still not know who would be the better employee once they got hired. These are examples of comparison decisions. In his book, Thinking Fast and Slow, Daniel Kahneman explains and discusses these very issues. He says that humans are inconsistent in making summary judgments of complex information. In general, humans rely too much on their intuitions when making comparative decisions. We are not good at it and are often inconsistent in doing so. Our evaluations are impacted by many external and internal factors. An important flaw in our thinking here is the halo effect, which is when you like one trait of a person or thing and so you try to like everything about them, which often leads to false judgments. For example, if you like a politician, you are more likely to forgive them or give them the benefit of the doubt if they make a mistake. It works the other way too. If I am a Democrat and a Republican candidate makes a mistake, I am much more likely to be harsh on that person and criticize them. Kahneman also states that oftentimes interviewers are too confident in their own abilities to get a good first impression from people and don't rely enough on other factors when hiring someone, which in turn lowers the validity of the whole interview process. Instead, Kahneman has a suggestion that is closely related to our maximum utility concept. He says that simple formulas that put equal weight to all predictors are often superior in such comparative decisions. To be more specific, he suggests doing the following. Select a few relatively independent important factors. Typically, six is a good number. You then score each candidate on, say, a scale from one to five regarding each of those factors. Remember that in order to avoid the halo effect, you should scale each category independently from all the rest. If you are scoring for category three, only focus on category three, not on the person's performance in the previous two categories. Then you simply add the scores for each candidate and choose the one with the highest total. This may seem very simple, but it is useful in many situations. Oftentimes, in fact, our results using this formula are different from what they would have been had we trusted our intuitions. For another example, say you get accepted to three different colleges, A, B, and C. You would look at the utility for each college separately, just like in the previous example. Here, your factors may be things such as ranking, financial aid package, location, and so on. Remember to choose relatively independent factors. For example, you wouldn't have one factor be location and another be restaurants in town because the two are related. Then add up the scores and pick the college with the highest total. It is extremely important to also avoid the halo effect here. Say you visited college B and loved its campus because it was beautiful. Do not let that cloud your judgment of other factors. Assign your scores honestly and independently from one another. Many people are skeptical of this approach because of its simplicity, but it is actually very useful. This concept goes back to our discussion of quantifying things when trying to make a decision. Many of us make decisions qualitatively, which might not be the best approach. By assigning values to our options, the best result often becomes 